We are now beginning Unit 2, which is taking a look at objects and classes. What we know so far is the fact that Java is this class-oriented language, meaning that whenever I write a new program, uh, what I'm actually doing is creating this thing called class. And what classes allow me to do so far, the only thing we've done with them is just create this one main method inside them to run, uh, so that when I you know, pull up that program in my command line, what I'm doing is I'm actually you know, just running whatever's in that method. What we can actually do with classes a lot more than that, what we can do is create these things called objects, and objects are just instances of classes that allow me to store information sometimes, or maybe you know, store a set of, uh, of functions, it just kind of depends on the situation. So, um, we're going to take a look at um, one, that, one that's been created for us, um, it's our duck class. Um, right now we're not going to worry about us having to write any of these things. What we're just going to worry about is, you know, it already being created for us, and then how are we going to use it? So, uh, what we're going to notice here is that this is a new class, uh, public class duck. Um, you'll notice the, the big difference between what we've done so far and what this has in it is that there's no main method. Um, in fact, that maybe should be the very first thing that we do is if we go to uh, run this, what happens? Um, we're now in unit two. All right, so if I try to compile this, um, this is duck, oh, duck, duck, Java. It'll compile just fine. It's, it's good, you know, Java code. But when I go to run it, we'll see that I get this error. Um, no main method found in, in the duck class. Um, and so what that's telling me is the fact that, well, I mean, there's no main method in the duck class. I have not set anything up for when I try to run this, uh, this class, this Java file, for it to actually have anything in it that we could run. Um, so it just stalls out and tells me that I don't have that, and then we move on. Um, so this class, we don't actually intend for it to get run on its own, really. Um, it's going to be used by something else. So uh, what we've gotten here is um, we're going to find out is that every time I make a new duck object, uh, we're going to have these three things. These are called state variables. And so um, each duck will have a name, that's a string, they'll have an ID number, and then they will have um, an occupation as well. Um, and then I've got some more methods down here, one of them being a special one, uh, that we're going to end up using. Um, the first one that I'm going to draw your attention to is this, this one right here. Um, so this is what's called a constructor. Uh, what constructors do is that they actually make uh, new instances of a given object. So they take in parameters. Um, in this case, they're going to take in my name, my ID number, my occupation. Uh, they don't always have to be all of the state variables. It could be none of the state variables or just uh, you know select few of them. But they take those three things in, and then we don't have to worry about this right now, but they're storing those values um, into one instance of my duck. Um, so let's just go ahead and attempt to run this. Uh, or to use this in another file. So I'm going to make a new file. I'm going to call this uh, duck developer, developer.java. Um, yep. Okay. So just like always, public class, uh, this is duck developer. Um, and so this time I will, oh, I will obviously have my public and static and void and main and string array and args um, because I'm actually intending for this to be run. So we know at this point in time that if I want to make some primitive variables, um, I can make a new primitive variable and set equal to uh, five if I wanted to. I can make another primitive variable and set equal to you know six, no problem. But what I'm doing is I'm asking Java to um, create this new variable, it's going to be an integer, and then I'm setting the value equal to 5. And so by doing this, what it's doing, it's setting aside uh, this memory on what we're going to call the stack um, to actually, you know, store uh, these, these primitive variables. Um, and so the nice thing about primitives is that there's a defined amount of size they have available to them. Uh, you know, it, 
when I'm storing an integer value, I know that is, oh, I'm gonna butcher this, um, that it has 16, um, you know, bytes or bits in it. Uh, I could be wrong about that, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, but it has a predetermined number of um, values that it can hold. And so um, that's all well and good. Uh, you know, when I'm going to work with objects, so it's not exactly going to be the case. We're going to see that in a second. Um, I, want to, I want to show you one more example coming from these primitives. Uh, another thing that I can do is I can set x to be equal to y. Um, and so maybe a great way of saying this would be that x is getting the value of y. And so now x's current value is 6. Um, what's worth noting, though, if I change y's value to 9 on the next line, it does not change x's value. It stays, it stays what it was, okay? Uh, that may or may not be the case when we talk about objects here in a second. So, how do I make a new object? And so here, here's the answer. Um, so just like before when I was declaring a variable, um, I'm going to declare that I'm gonna make a new duck. Um, its name, I'm just gonna go with duck number one. Um, and we are gonna set this equal to, all right, so it's gonna be a little bit different than when I define primitives. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type the word new. New tells me that I'm gonna be allocating space in what is called the heap. Uh, what the heap does is this place in memory that allows me to store information of undetermined size. Uh, you know, I don't know how big this uh, object is gonna be. Um, you know, if I go and take a look at my, my code, um, I've got you know, primitives in there, um, which are gonna take up a certain amount, but I also have strings, which I don't know how big those are gonna be. And you know, every object's a little bit different. Maybe they have an array in them, which we haven't talked about yet. And so point being, I don't know how much space and memory this is gonna take up. And so I'm just allocating a chunk of space um, in the heap for this new variable. Uh, now the interesting thing then is, and this is another one of the big differences obviously between objects and primitives, is the fact that I have to use my constructor. My constructor will always have the name of the class in this case, it will take in three things. It's going to take in three parameters. It's going to take in my name, my ID number, and my occupation. Um, so in this case, my duck's name is Alan. Uh, his ID number is obviously zero. And his occupation is that he is a computer scientist. Perfect. Okay. So um, I've created my new duck. And he now exists, which is great. Um, what I've done is I've created an instance of this class, all right? So this is just one duck element um, or one duck object. Now, I don't really have anything I can do with him yet. Let me go back to my job or my, my duck class to see what I have. Um, what, I, what we have here is this method, uh, which we're gonna learn about later um, or more about later, but it's just this method that I can call on an object um, using a two string. Um, name and what it's going to do is going to return a string with all my information in it. The name, uh, the ID, his occupation. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to just print out the information about my first duck here. So the way this works is that we're going to use what's called the, the dot operator. So duck one dot and then I'm going to uh, ask it to call upon it a certain method which in this case was the two string method. Um, yeah, I'll go back and look at this again. It took in no parameters, no parameters, um, and so I can just call it on my duck. And so if I test this out and I go and I run it, um, okay, so this time I want to, uh, yes, compile, or actually I want to compile this, oops, uh, duckdeveloper.java. Um, and then I'll run it. Before I do that, it's worth noting that, um, so I already compiled uh, the duck class um, before uh, up here, um, and then I tried to run it, which didn't work. Uh, what's happening though behind the scenes is that whenever I compile the duck developer class, um, it's going through and in this case, checking to see, hey, um, there's this reference to this thing called duck. I don't know what that is. Uh, so the first thing it's gonna do is check in my current directory to see if there's anything there that would, you know, be referenced to. And in this case, they say, oh yeah, there's this duck class right here. Uh, and so what it will do is it will compile that as well. Um, it does it automatically where it will compile, if it needs to, 
um, this this version of the class um, of of my you know the ones being used here uh, for me, and so then I don't have to do it on my own. And so if I would have deleted, actually let's do that. Why not? Let's go crazy. Um, if I delete this, yeah, and then I go back through and I do this again. You'll notice that it recreates that duck class for me. It compiles that as well, along with the duck developer class. So um, let's go ahead and run this. Duck developer, enter. Um, I did something wrong. Oh yeah, I was okay. That was really dumb. Um, so <laughs> okay, let's go back and one more time look at what's actually going on here. Um, so this is returning my string, which means that it's not printing it out. It's actually returning it, um, which means that oh, go back. Um, what I need to do is print this out. Um, so this is returning a string and not actually doing anything with it. So right now it just kind of was thrown out there and then nothing, nothing happened. Um, however, if I return a string into my print statement, <laughs> then something will happen. Okay. Try it one more time. All right, wonderful. So I got my uh, doc. His name is Alan. ID number zero. He's a computer scientist. Fantastic. Everything I could ever want. So let me go back then. And uh, so if I make another duck, so we'll call this duck two. Um, this will be oh I don't know. Um, well, I have to start off the same way again. Um, this is going to be my new duck. His name is going to be Steve. Um, his ID number is uh, 12, um, and he is an engineer. Okay, so I've made a new duck now. So my question is, does this in any way, shape, or form affect uh, what I just did with my other duck? So is duck 2 going to in any way, shape, or form affect duck 1? And if we remember what we know about objects at this point, the answer of course is going to be no. If I go and run this again, what I'll see is that, um, and actually let me just, uh, I'm doing this just to get a new line in between, so print lines doesn't give me a blank space. Um, if I go and I compile and I run again, um, then I have my two separate ducks, okay? Creating different instances don't affect each other. They're not gonna, they have no impact on each other. There's nothing, nothing, no overlap, nothing like that, as far as we know right now. Um, so what that means is that, um, you know, I can have these separate ducks and they have their own attributes and their own characteristics. They are all of the same type. They are all ducks, but they're all independent from each other. They all kind of do their own thing, have their own attributes. So. Um, let us let us kind of mess with this a bit. So let's say then I uh, did something slightly different. Um, so as we talked about, you know, we could have an uh, integer value x and then assign it to be the same value as y. Well, we can do the same thing here. So if I declare a new duck, this would be now duck number three. Um, I can set it equal to what duck number two has in it, which is Steve, and he is the engineer. Okay. Um, so let's just let's just go ahead and see what happens uh, when I go and try and run this. So I'm just going to print out the information for duck number three, and what I'm going to find is that this is a fine way of assigning things. Okay, so now I have I still have Alan, no change, and now I have Steve, which I had before, and now I have another version of Steve again. Okay, um, and so what this is doing for me is that um, this is this is taking uh, this object that was already created and and assigning it um, to duck three as well. Now here's the big difference. Okay, and this will be obvious. Maybe I should show by example them just telling you. Um, I've got one more method in here. It's called change occupation. What it's going to do is change the occupation of the duck. So let's say for example. Um, okay, so I've assigned uh, duck3 to be equal to duck2, which was great. Um, however, uh, duck2 has gotten a change of heart. He no longer wants to be an engineer. 
he decides to change jobs um, and now he is going to be um, a salesman. Okay, I should probably capitalize that. This only seems fair. Okay, so the question is what's gonna happen here? Obviously it's something interesting or otherwise I wouldn't be asking about it. Um, but so what? what's gonna actually occur? So if I go back and uh, I compile again and then I run and what I'll see is that, okay, Alan stays the same, he's unchanged, but both Steve, so Duck2 and Duck3 are now salesmen. So just to be clear what happened here, I had Duck2, that's when he was created. I then assigned Duck3 to have Duck, or yeah, Duck3 to have Duck2's value. And then I changed the occupation of Duck2. I have not changed Duck3 in any way, shape, or form. Duck3 should be an engineer. Here's my issue, is that uh, primitives are what's called passed by value, where they um, actually give the value that they hold to something else. However, uh, objects are what's called passed by reference. So what's now happening is that both duck3 and duck2 are pointing at this one created duck object, Steve. And so when I change Steve, it looks like I'm changing what duck2 is. What I'm really changing is Steve, right? I'm changing this object. I'm changing him to be a salesman. And so duck2 and duck3 both point at Steve, the engineer, now salesman. So anything I change about duck3 is gonna have an effect on duck2 and vice versa because they're pointing at the same duck. And so, uh, you know, I could, I could, you know, make some point, or I say, like, if I could want, well, let's, let's do one more change. Um, so let's say uh, I got, so duck3, which is just really a reference, gets tired of being Steve. Instead, he wants to be Alan. And we change that um, to point at duck1. Then, uh, you know, I'm actually, uh, I'm pointing at a new thing now. And so if I, that was the wrong thing. Um, if I go and run this, what I'll see is that he's now pointing at Alan, all right? So what we do, yeah, we, we refer to these as pointers. Uh, they're referencing different uh, stored values, right? There, is a, there are two currently places in space of ducks being stored. We've got Alan and we've got Steve. Um, and now we're just, you know, changing which ones duck one, two, and three are pointing at is all okay so this is one of the big 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 differences um, between uh, primitives and objects is that I can do this this pointing thing and change what I'm actually looking at so this is a kind of our first introduction um, and really our push off into the deep end for classes and objects um, we're gonna get much more into uh, kind of defining some of these things as far as these different types of methods. Uh, that's going to be our next step. Um, but this is kind of our, our, yeah, our introduction into just how they work, how they store things, um, and then importantly, yeah, how they actually get stored in the system. Um, but we are going to dive more into this um, in future videos.